Good evening guys and welcome to another Logic Pro 10 live training session. Today with a very special topic, um, the recently released orchestral library by Spitfire Audio, BBC Symphonic Orchestra Discover. Yes, they announced it a few days ago. Um, I was very keen in kind of getting this library uh, on my computer and I'm very happy that I actually did that, that I did not uh, wait for too long um, in order to get this library. We will talk about it um, uh, from, well, from scratch basically so that you know what it's all about, how to use it, what you can do with it, how it sounds and yeah. I would say um, let's just dive right into it. Um, I would like to invite you to uh, stay with me on the live stream because um, as I announced in the description already, I have a bit of a surprise for you, um, which I would like to share during the duration of this video. So um, there is no point in waiting until I'm ready and just skip to the end. I will just drop a little nuggets here and there and uh, yeah, but I have something for you and I think you're gonna love it. So first things first, the usual let me switch to my screen and let's talk about BBC Symphonic Orchestra Discover. So there we are this is the Spitfire Audio website and um, there is some information um, about this uh, library. So um, there are obviously certain selling points here um, one thing I can mark this already 200 megabytes yes mega not giga nope megabytes so this thing literally fits on even the, I don't know, the smallest laptop configuration you can ever buy. It's absolutely incredible. And I'm really um, stoked about this because, um, well, I have a MacBook, um, obviously, because um, this is a logic training at the end of the day. Um, and I have not been going for the biggest memory configuration. So for me, um, memory efficiency when it comes to libraries is very, very, very important because I don't always want to uh, carry around my external hard drive if I, I don't know, go to a coffee shop and start composing, which I will be doing again whenever it's being allowed again, um, just kind of as a side note. So I'm not doing it at the moment. Um, Anyway, so um, I want a library which is small, compact, but still offers a very nice and great sound. And Spitfire actually managed to do that. So this is the not just a stripped down version of the um, original um, BBC Symphonic Orchestra library, which is now called Professional. Um, this is basically like the library sneezed and there is a few droplets kind of flying through the air. Um, that's what the library is at the end of the day. It's a fraction, very, 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 very little, but um, it offers us a great deal. So what you can do here, <coughs> excuse me, that's, yeah, I need to drink, has nothing to do with that uh, funny virus thing, which is currently spreading. Um, if I scroll down here, you have a bit of information. Um, you have a few audio samples, um, which obviously have been produced by the Spitfire uh, team. Um, and uh, I know that some, some of you guys are sometimes a bit, uh, let's say, critical when it comes to um, pre-made uh, demo versions from sample manufacturers because obviously they always try to make their product sound the best. Um, but we will, can have a quick listen later on. Um, there is this uh, new feature which is called mode switching in case you are owning the uh, higher libraries. Um, so uh, Symphony Orchestra Core or the big one, the professional version, which makes it kind of um, interchangeable between. So you can switch down from the pro version back down to discover. You won't have all the sounds available, but you will have kind of like a very close um, neighbor of the sound you're looking for. So instead of a con consordino, for example, you will just have a long note playing. Um, instead of a, a colenio, for example, you will have just a spiccato. Um, so kind of just to kind of tell you what this is all about. So um, here is the articulations, which we actually get. Um, as you can see here, the string sections, we have the basics. We have long notes, spiccato notes, pizzicato and tremolo for uh, nearly all the strings, uh, strings um, except of the basses. The basses don't have uh, any tremolo, which is it's fair enough at the end of the day. I mean, I will get to that in a second. Um, and then uh, all the other uh, instruments has, have usually kind of a long articulation and a short articulation. And we have a bit of percussion as well. 
Um, basically, it's a basic orchestra. So what you would have to write, I don't know, a piece like whatever Beethoven was writing back in the day. So the system requirements are very, very, very decent. Um, Mac OS 10.10, .10, for the people who remember uh, that still. Intel Core 2 Duo, which is amazing. Um, Windows, well, uh, this is a logic training, shouldn't really be our uh, problem, but here comes the kicker. So currently, this library is being sold at 49 euros, and I have no idea what that one cent is doing here, but let's just, let's just say there is one cent uh, going to wherever it's going to. Or, and that's the amazing part, it's for free. Yes, you pay the 49 euros, dollars, if you have the money, if you are willing to spend um, the money, and if you think that the musicians who uh, were um, involved in this project deserve a bit of a cut of whatever uh, a library is being sold here. If, however, you are in a financially challenging, challenging situation, especially at the moment, I mean, yeah, we kind of all are in a challenging situation, I would say. Um, if it's, uh, if even these 49 euros are too much for you, you have an option to get this library for free. There's kind of a learn more feature. If I click on there, it will not allow me to show you what it uh, used to be because I actually purchased the library. Um, you have to fill in a questionnaire. It's like, I don't know, maybe it takes five, six minutes of your time. Just fill in a few questions and then you will have to wait for two weeks until they send you the link. Um, if one of you uh, who is watching this video opted for this, um, please let me uh, know in the comment section below um, if that actually works, because I have no idea. As I said, I was thrilled. I filled in all the questionnaire and everything was ready. And um, then, I don't know, two hours later, I was thinking, you know what, F this, I'm gonna buy it. I mean, hello, I, I don't want to wait for two weeks. I don't have a reason to wait for two weeks. And I do have the 49 euros to buy that library. So why shouldn't I do that? So there's a more, bit more frequently asked questions here, but we don't really need to talk about that. So spitfireaudio.com and then click your way through Symphony Orchestra Discover. So I'm gonna have a sip of coffee and then I'm gonna switch over to Logic and we will have a quick listen. So there we go. Okay, um, I have a piece of music uh, prepared, which is not mine. So somebody else um, was writing this piece of music few hundred of years ago. I have no idea. I, I can't even I can't even remember. But it's one of my uh, favorite pieces of classical music of a certain composer. Um, the composer is Ludwig van Beethoven, and this is Molto Vivace from the uh, Ninth Symphony. I think it's the second movement, if I remember correctly. But please don't slap me if I'm wrong. Anyways, I was putting together this um, piece of music. Actually, if you can see here, the whole thing. I will not make you listen currently through 11 minutes of music. Um, I'm not going to do that, but we will kind of just go uh, in, just listen to maybe two minutes, sit back, relax. If you have headphones, wear your headphones. It's always more joy to listen to music with headphones or at least great speakers. And yeah, let's just have a listen and see what this sound library actually can do. <laughs>
okay and so on and so forth um yeah so this is the sound of bbc symphony orchestra discover in a well symphonic kind of way so um we can see here um this kind of score uh, has um Basically, it has a pic it doesn't have a piccolo flute. I just added a piccolo flute because I thought it's a good idea. Um, basically, it's just doubling what the, the top part of the flutes are playing. We have flutes A3, which means three flute players at the same time. We have oboes A3, once again, three oboe player at the same time. We have clarinets, we have bassoons. Then in the brass section, we have horns A4, which basically means four horn players. We have trumpet, trumpets, trumpets, A3, tenor trombones and bass trombones. Um, the only percussion um, used in this piece of music is the timpani. So obviously we have a nice timpani. And then we have uh, our string section with first violins, second violins, violas, celli and basses. Yes, but that's not all which is in the library. So let me just maybe show you that and remove this little window here from me. So as you can see here in Logic, there is this little H enabled and it's orange. So when I click on that, um, you will see all the tracks which are currently hidden. So there is more. So obviously we have a tuba, we have harp. The piano is actually not um, part of this library. It's the Spitfire Audio um, Labs soft piano. We have uh, Celeste. I have a sub bass, which is the, well, it's not the EXS24 anymore because Logic Pro 10.5 does not have an EXS24 anymore, but it still does the job. It gives us a nice sub bass if we need it. Then we have untuned uh, orchestral percussion, which is basically a very basic orchestral drum kit. We have um, tubola bells. We have a beautiful sounding marimba. We have a xylophone. We have a very nice glockenspiel. Yes, and then, as I said, uh, our violins, uh, the violas, the celli, and the basses. So this is the basic um, symphony orchestra. So let me just uh, open up the plugin, and I will actually show you how this works. I think what I'm going to do, though, um, let me just create quickly a... Let me hide all of these. And I'm going to create a new MIDI track underneath the basses. Software instrument. Let's immediately change that to Spitfire Audio, Symphony Orchestra Stereo. Output one and two is fair, but let me use the bus of my template so that everything remains as I want it to remain. Okay, so, and let me, um, first things first, do the load the full version and maybe make it a big, bit bigger because otherwise currently it might be a bit small for you guys to actually see what's happening here. Okay, so there we go. So, um, yeah, that's the plugin. It's loading um, according to the settings with violins one as the first uh, patch. And we have some tremolos as well here. So, if you want to change your instrument, um, very straightforward. Just click on the instrument you want to use. Let's say I want to uh, play some flutes. You just click on this area where the flute player usually would sit.
and you have your flutes. Same with the clarinets. Um, by the way, uh, the key switching which I'm doing here live at the moment, I have a... Let me show you this. Maybe I have no idea if you can see it. It is an M Audio uh, Code 61 keyboard and I have uh, pre-programmed, um, let's say, my key switches uh, in order to make sure... Oh yeah, okay. Apologies. Um, just to make sure that I can switch my articulations without any problem. Actually, I think I'm gonna move my move this a bit to the left so that I can actually see my keys because currently I can't they are hidden so so okay so back to uh, back to where I was before so you kind of select your instruments just by clicking on it um, we have all the sections here available um, when it comes to the percussion section um, instead of key switching articulations we have let's say two instruments here so for example currently it's set to harp and if we click here on this key switch, which you can do by mouse, or if you have um, another key switch, you can do it manually, then we go uh, to the Celeste. Sounds absolutely amazing. Um, same thing with the percussion section. So we have either uh, the timpani drums, or the untuned percussion, as I mentioned before. Orchestral uh, percussion. And the tuned percussion, we have either the tubular, be tubular bells, the marimba, the xylophone, or the glockenspiel. All right. So, um, down here, these, um, let, let me maybe switch to, uh, let's switch to the cellos for a second. So, um, this is your master uh, volume slider, um, which I kind of uh, put on um, CC11 for expression, which is basically kind of what Spitfire does in general. So CC11 for them is expression, and it's always the overall volume of uh, your patch. Not of the plugin that's kind of controlled over here, but of your patch. And then there's something in addition, which is um, in this case doesn't really matter, but I will get to that in a second, um, which is your dynamic slider. So basically it would be um, uh, from a piano level. So, <coughs> sorry, very low. Up to, uh, well, as loud as it can go. And usually this would blend between the recorded piano samples and the recorded fortissimo samples. But as I said, this library is different. There is a reason why this library is only 200 megabytes uh, large. So, um, and also this would be the reverb slider. I have to see which one it's bound here. Okay, so um, now currently there is no reverb uh, on, but kind of the sound uh, of the recorded hall and whatever, uh, um, uh, Jake Jackson mixed uh, into the actual samples. This would be reverb full on and this reverb off. Okay, um, yeah. So let me talk a little bit about the disadvantage of this library. As I said, it's 200 megabytes. So what can you expect for 200 megabytes? I have to say, the sound of it in general. I did not do any um, uh, audio engineering, which is um, significant here. So there is no equalizer on the uh, tracks. The only thing I did was uh, a tiny bit of um, uh, gain control uh, at the master, a tiny bit of um, EQing. So I, I removed a bit, listen, I mean one, one decibel, nearly nothing. A tiny bit around 100 kilohertz, a tiny bit more about 560 hertz, and I gave it a tiny boost at uh, 5300, just to give a bit more clarity and a bit more openness to the sound. Um, I have a, a channel compressor on it, which is very limited in um, what it's doing. So um, it is one, uh, 1.4 by one. Um, with the threshold very, very, very minimal, so that only kind of if something is escaping, it will be slightly compressed, but really, really, really little. 
Um, I have the console queue at the end, um, just to give it a bit of warmth, which I throw I throw that thing on my mix bus in Logic all the time. This is, I think, the best plugin you can put before that thing goes into the final limiter, just to give it the tiny bit of tweaking if there's something still missing in your sound. This plugin will solve that for you. It's absolutely amazing. And then last but not least, I have an adaptive limiter uh, just to yeah, bring the volume up a bit. That's it at the end of the day. So that's the only, uh, uh, let's say, audio engineering I was doing here. Nothing else. There is no gain plugin. There is no equalizer. There is no extra v reverb. There is no extra compression. There is nothing. What you heard basically was like it just came out of the box. Maybe I just um, play you a, a quick little part. Maybe let's select this one. There's something going on here. It looks like it. And I switch all of these off. And let's just have a listen. And so on and so forth. That was the sound out of the box. Nothing else to it. That's it. Done. Ready. N next. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, that's what I really like about this library. It's small, it's extremely efficient, and it sounds great for its size. It sounds absolutely amazing for this size. So um, now we have to talk a tiny bit about, let's say, the, the negatives or kind of the um, the compromises you have to make um, with a library of this size at this price point. I mean, free is a pretty decent price point, all right? Um, so what this library does not have, and maybe I can go back to the website for a second, because we have a comparison chart actually, somewhere down here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Was it more at the top, more at the bottom? I can't remember. No, it was more at the bottom. Compare, there we go. So, um, because there are obviously certain things missing. So, number one, um, if you compare it to the other um, libraries, so kind of the core version and the professional version, we only have 33 um, instruments. That's it. So you don't get the extra, uh, into you, you won't find an English horn, you won't find an alto uh, uh, a clarinet, you won't find um, the section leaders of the, of the string ensemble, for example. So the numbers of techniques is also very limited. I mean, 47 compared to 435 in the professional version, that actually says it all. So you have the basics, you are covered with the basics. So now the advantage where I would say, nah, that maybe in an update, maybe later, maybe make it a bit more pricey, just increase the price 20 pounds and give us at least a uh, another round robin. That would be amazing. So round robin basically, for the people who don't know that, if you hit a sample, um, what do I have here? Let me just... Okay, so this was um, staccato cello note. So I played that very fast and you could hear that so-called machine gun effect, which basically means that the same sample is triggered at the same volume level all the time, which gives you a very static sounding sound. It doesn't sound natural anymore. If you have kind of these fast repetitions. With the other libraries, it will sound way more realistic because you have alternatives. So basically you hit a key, the first sample is triggered. You hit the key again, the second sample is triggered at the same level, the second recording is triggered, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so that's missing. The library does not have that. Um, when it comes to uh, signals, we only have one mix. To be honest with you, I'm good with that. Um, nearly all of my Spitfire libraries, I use two mixes, which is the tree mic and the close mic. All outriggers and all this stuff, fancy schmancy, yeah, if you use that, good for you, great. I don't, I don't need this. So for me, a Spitfire library could be, I don't know, one quarter of the size and it would be good because I don't need all these extra microphone positions in what I usually do. I'm just not interested in that. Comes with it, okay, <coughs> sorry, okay. Here it doesn't, so we have one mic position, which is 
as far as I understood, the most used um, microphone mix of the professional version. So it's kind of the Jake Jackson um, mix. Um, and that's what we have. Next little disadvantage here is the dynamic layers. So here in core and professional, you can uh, see up to three, which sometimes um, doesn't sound that much, but um, in, a, in, a, in a context, if you hear, uh, if you listen to the whole orchestra at the end of the day, three dynamic layers is more than enough. So let's say piano, um, mezzo piano or mezzo forte, and then forte or fortissimo. Here we only have one. Um, if I go back down to the long note, and I uh, take it down from the uh, volume at its lowest. And I take it up high, it's the same sample. So the other libraries would blend between the uh, piano samples and, uh, and uh, the uh, up, Jesus, blah, blah, tongue, more coffee, one, two, three. So the bigger libraries would blend the signals better in so that it sounds more natural. And then another thing, um, there is no legatos with this library. So basically, if you want to play a legato line, you have to do it on your own. So there is no uh, legato transitions. Um, you have to uh, play legato like, uh, yeah, you would play legato on a piano one. If you want to have kind of a legato sound, make sure that the notes are overlapping nicely and not. Yeah, yeah, so, but guys, that's it. Um, it's a very, very simple library, very, very amazing. And if you haven't, um, downloaded it yet if you haven't bought it yet or if you haven't applied for the free version yet guys do so as i said it's for fudging free yeah same with the labs um uh, instruments if you have not downloaded the labs instruments yet do so they are a nearly endless source of creativity you can do so many interesting things with that um yeah, and at the end of the day, that's all what we need. So now um, I promised you that I uh, want to talk a tiny bit more about um, the surprise I've got for you. Um, I just quickly need to prepare something. So let's do this again. So um, as you can see here, I have um, kind of I have a nice, let's say, little list um, with all the instruments. They are color coded. They are uh, routed in a certain way. So let's say my uh, flutes go to bus one. My uh, brass, bus two. Um, no idea why I can't see bus three here. Maybe. Eh, I have no idea. Maybe it's somewhere else. It's hidden. I can't see it at the moment. Anyways, um, it's not important. So if I go on all, then everything should be there. Yes, exactly. So my, uh, let's say, key instruments go to bus three, um, bus four, bus five, and so on and so forth. Um, these then uh, kind of it's kind of my sub mixes of all these instrument groups will then go into the mix bus, which then at the end will go into the stereo output. Um, I have uh, uh, effects set up as well uh, in my, uh, let's say, little template, and I gave it these beautiful little um, uh, markers, uh, uh, markers, uh, track icons. Um, so the only one which is kind of a bit out is this one because uh, I just added an audio track within this project and yeah. I didn't bother to, to change this. Um, yeah, so this is a, a template for Logic Pro 10.5. So if you are still on a previous version of Logic Pro 10, this might not be for you yet. So I'm pretty sure that sooner or later you will switch and uh, update your Logic version anyways, if your operating system permits it. Um, so there are certain things which you need to uh, be aware of before updating your uh, Logic Pro version anyways. So what I'm going to do quickly, um, let me just close this for a second. We don't need to save this. I want to show you something, which is this. Yes, guys. So I created this template for you, which you can download for free on my website. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the link. I'm going to go over to my Ecamm Live, try to find my chat, and I'm just, just going to uh, da, 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 da. Do I have a chat window here? I think I used to, but it's not really there. Anyways, I will drop it in the comments afterwards. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, so I will uh, uh, give you this template for free. So this is set up for um, BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover 
and for labs soft piano. These are kind of the two requirements which you will need, including Logic Pro 10.5. I have no idea um, if this will open in the previous versions of Logic Pro 10 or not. You can try it out and tell me if it does or if it doesn't. I updated, I don't care what previous Logic versions uh, do or don't do, not my problem. Um, I moved on uh, and that's kind of why I'm offering this for you. Um, the only thing I would like to uh, get in uh, return is uh, an email address in order um, to keep in touch if there is anything else in the future which I might well, offer. So I do these things every once in a while and maybe find a sampling instrument or whatever. So I do certain things every once in a while and if you want to be notified about this, um, yeah, just kind of uh, uh, type in your name, last name, email address, um, tick that little uh, robot thingy because nobody likes robots and then you can download the template. So um, just to show you with logic again how this actually works. So we go up here on file, new from template, and then I have here my BBC Labs full template 2.0 because I had the first version first. And it's just loading up. Doesn't take too long. Poof, there we go. Everything ready, ready to record. You have an idea quickly. You want to put it down with your piano. And you can, yeah, you can record immediately. Hit the record button, record your idea, off you go. So um, as I said, kind of the routing is kind of pre-prepared already. Um, there is that uh, little, uh, uh, let's say, master chain at the end, which you can use or you don't have to use. You can do with it whatever you want. If you need to add tracks and so on and so forth, you can uh, keep in touch. Um, yeah, I will drop the links um, uh, below. Yes, no, don't worry, Brandy, this will be uh, available for restream. I will not take the video down. So this will remain available because I want um, many, many, many people to see this and yeah, take advantage of it at the end of the day. We are all musicians and we want to do something useful with our time whilst we are still in lockdown. Day 68 for us here in Spain, if I saw the news correct. Yes, over two months. Since two months, I haven't been... Uh, out except for shopping and uh, an odd bike ride in the evening. Anyways, guys, um, yeah, so that's uh, more or less it. Um, I have the link uh, to the template. I dropped it in the comments um, as soon as I finish the live video. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please do get in touch. I'm willing to help you. I'm uh, offering, um, if you need a bit in-depth help as well, reach out, get in touch, and we can see if we can uh, organize a private session. Um, yeah, in Ireland as well, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. I have friends uh, actually up there and yeah, but it's it's less it's less strict than it is here, trust me. So here they call it a military lockdown, which should ring all the alarm bells um, a Democrat can uh, ring. <laughs> Anyways, um, we'll not discuss this um, at this point in time. Um, I will uh, kind of drop all the links in the comments uh, below. Give the video a like um, if you like it. Um, if you don't like it, well, well, give me a dislike. I don't care at the end of the day. I do this from the goodness of my heart and I'm wishing you all the best. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, speak to you guys uh, soon. And well, there's nothing more to say. Have a wonderful evening. All the best, have a great weekend, and guys, compose, compose, compose. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.